Here goes 5.5 solids, liquids, and vapor pressure. First, we're going to take a look at solids. And a lot of this is going to be review. So, solids, the phase of matter characterized by particles that appear to vibrate around fixed points. Now, as the temperature of a liquid is lowered, eventually the forces of attraction between particles, right, our IMFs, become stronger. And these attractive forces, these IMFs, arrange particles in an orderly fashion. At this point, the motion of the particles becomes severely restricted, so they only vibrate in place. They're not moving from place to place, only vibrating. The temperature at which a substance becomes a solid is its melting point or its freezing point. Usually we're talking about becoming a solid, the freezing point, when it's going the other way from a solid to liquid, it would be melting point, but the temperature is the same. And true solids have a structure called a crystal lattice. And here's just some examples of crystal lattices where they're just rigidly organized with no real room to move. All right, next we're gonna look at liquids. And liquids are characterized by particles appearing to vibrate around moving points. If we look at this picture down here, right, these blue arrows okay, are kind of representing evaporation, which is the process by which surface particles of liquids escape into the vapor state. They're undergoing a phase change from liquid to gas, but it's a very specific kind. Please don't confuse evaporation with vaporization or boiling because they are different. Evaporation, <laughs> evaporation only takes place at the surface. Can a liquid evaporate if its temperature is below its normal boiling point? Well, yes. So what's happening during evaporation, right, for here we have our liquid and the particles are kind of wiggling around but every now and then, one of them gets enough energy, right, here's our container, here's our liquid. Every now and then, one of them gets enough energy to escape. At that point, it's evaporating, going from a liquid to a gas. All right, vapor pressure, which is table H in our reference table, we'll take a closer look at it in a few moments, is the upward pressure exerted by a vapor in equilibrium with its liquid. So these blue arrows are vapor pressure. These red arrows are atmospheric pressure pushing back. The stronger the red arrows pushing back against the blue, so the stronger atmospheric pressure is going to yield a lower vapor pressure. A lower or weaker atmospheric pressure will yield a higher vapor pressure. And what happens if the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure? Well, that's when we get boiling. And we'll see that in a little bit as well. Okay. Higher vapor pressure. Liquids with a higher vapor pressure are going to have weaker intermolecular forces. Liquids with a lower vapor pressure are going to have stronger intermolecular forces. All right, so if we think of these in terms of intermolecular forces, things with lower vapor pressure are going to have things with hydrogen bonding or stronger polar molecules, okay, stronger dipole-dipole forces. Weaker is going to be a lot of our dispersion forces, types of uh, substances. All right, so here's the table with our vapor pressure of liquids. And I'm going to give you a once-over now, and then we're going to talk about it when we do some of these problems in class. So right here we can see this dotted line, 101.3 kilopascals, and that is equal to one atmosphere, or just standard atmosphere pressure. Okay, And when the vapor pressure is equal to that, we have boiling. So where each of these intersect will be the boiling points for each of these substances. So we can follow that down on our graph for the temperature and see here that propanone, right, we say 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. So this is 55. So propanone's boiling point is going to be about 56 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, water's boiling point, we can see it intersects right at 100 degrees, so water's boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. Common questions that you're going to be asked about these is going to be things along the line of, all right, so when you have ethanol at 50 degrees Celsius, what's the vapor pressure? So when we look down here, temperature side, find 50 degrees Celsius, trace it up to the line for ethanol, see where they intersect, and trace over and at 50 degrees Celsius ethanol's vapor pressure is 1020 eh, about 28 or 29 kilopascals could also be asked if a substance has a if uh, ethanol has a vapor pressure of 80 kilopascals what temperatures are going to be so we just go over here's 80 right 50 60 70 80 go over to ethanol intersects the line right about here which is going to be about my like 50 55 60 65 70 about 73 degrees celsius all right question time go back look at the graph what effect does temperature have on vapor pressure and using your knowledge of chemistry and the information on the vapor pressures of four liquids, what we were just looking at, which statement concerning propanone and water at 50 degrees Celsius is true. Okay? All right, that brings us to the end. I will see you guys in school.